let's get into lessons from the world's best campaigns. Um, now, what do we mean by the world's best campaigns? Well, we have a number of ways of looking at what good looks like in, uh, uh, in marketing. Um, and one of those is a thing called the Walk 100. The Walk 100 is a product we launched a few years ago. Um, it's a ranking, uh, rankings product based on uh, performance in effectiveness uh, competitions all over the world. And this year, we relaunched the product as part of um, the Gun Report, which came into, came into Walk uh, a year or so ago. Um, we now have rankings based on creativity, based on effectiveness, and based on uh, media performance. So these are the two campaigns we're going to be looking at. The first one is Barbie, imagine the possibilities, uh, the global repositioning of the Barbie brand. And to talk us through that and what they've learned is Elena Crystal, Strategy Director of AMV BBDO. We'll follow that up with uh, a talk on Tide Super Bowl campaigns by Paul Bickler, uh, ECD of Saatchi & Saatchi in New York. So let me tell you a bit about me before I tell you a little bit about Barbie. Um, it's probably not going to surprise you when I tell you that I'm a feminist. Um, and and th that's not surprising for probably a number of reasons, mostly my demographic, but, but it probably won't surprise you when I say that. Um, you know, a reader of Steinem, a listener of Deborah Francis White, uh, an activist who has campaigned for Hillary and for the Women's Equality Party in the UK. But what might surprise you is that my journey as a feminist started with this little lady. And a lot of you are probably sitting there going, how is that even possible when Barbie has been vilified by feminists for decades? How is that even possible that someone's feminist journey, that, that their journey towards equal rights could begin with this little doll? I'm going to tell you a little bit about that today as I talk you through the Barbie case study. A couple of things. The first is a shift in our thinking from mass marketing to mass mattering. Um, this problem was never going to be solved with a 30-second TV ad and a couple of print executions. This needed to be solved by connecting to millennial moms on their level. Um, so crucially, the work never launched in TV. It went on TV after the fact, but it did not launch on TV. Uh, it launched as online video, and it was seeded out using a number of influencers who really speak to millennial moms uh, in a really credible way. So it was much more about a grassroots movement to change the way that people think about Barbie rather than trying to do it from the top down. And crucially, we saw that it worked in the media as well as it shifted the media narrative from what Barbie looks like to what she enables. This is a brand that is pink and sparkly and fun. And when you see a little girl playing with Barbie, you don't go, I'm sad. You go, yay, this is the cutest thing ever. And we needed to bring that back to the execution. And so by focusing on the solution, rather than the problem of what holds girls back, by focusing on the solution of what pushes girls forward, we were able to, I think, hit on the right answer. If we're trying to own the game, how are we going to own three and a half hours with 100 seconds? Because that's what we had figured out that we could basically afford to do. We need to teach the audience to look for Tide ads. So if we have this amount of time to work with and we're thinking about breaking it up, the first thing we need to do is essentially brief the viewer, tell them what they should be looking for, teach them to fish <laughs> is kind of the way we were talking about it. The impact that this had, um, we, I mean, we like to think basically we changed the viewing experience of the Super Bowl with advertising because what was happening in social and what was um, going on during the game was people were constantly guessing, is what I'm seeing going to turn into another one of these Tide ads? We can change what, what any marketer believes they can really buy with a television spot with this type of approach because if you take you know, your advertising time and you really think through the communication architecture of it, of how things are gonna play as an experience with the viewer and with the second screen, um, what are you really buying? And is it just the time? Is it the time in between? Is it the overall experience? And so we like to say, um, like, well, we didn't buy ads, we bought the Super Bowl. 